Welcome back, everybody. Let's remember lesson number one, where we said that the priority of a thread is influenced by the length, order, age, and urgency. The length and order give higher priority to threads with shorter tasks that came first. Age gives higher priority to threads that have been waiting for far too long. And all three of these factors are dynamically computed by the operating system. But urgency is static because you can specify it inside of your code. And that's why this lesson will seek to influence the priority of a thread by manipulating its urgency. So to start, make sure that you download the course resources from the GitHub link that I will leave you inside of the course description. Once you do, launch thread priority inside of whatever editor you wanna use. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. I'll go ahead and maximize my editor and let's begin. All right, we're going to start with thread priority.java and inside the starter code, you will notice three threads. Each thread is performing the identical task of counting from zero to 99. Nothing too interesting, but just looking at this code, one might wonder, will any of these threads have an inherent priority over the other? Probably not. It's possible for each thread to run concurrently with say thread one getting priority. or on multiple cores with threads two and three getting priority over thread one, who knows? The specifics of how these threads are going to get processed by the CPU is very unpredictable. And if we go back to our code, since the main thread is initiating T1, T2, and T3 almost simultaneously, and each thread is performing the identical task of counting, Factors like age, order, and length, they become negligible in trying to determine which thread will be prioritized over the other. But using code, we can still manipulate the urgency factor to influence the priority of each thread, which we're going to do right now. So here I'm going to say t1.setPriority. I'm going to set the priority of thread1 to be thread.MaximumPriority. So max priority is just a constant, an integer constant from the thread class that equals 10. This is the max priority that a thread can have. I'm going to give T2 uh, set priority. I'm going to give it thread dot norm priority. This is the default priority that a thread can be assigned. And T3 dot set priority. I'm going to give this one minimum priority. This is the lowest priority that a thread can have, or the minimum, I should say. All right. And now, what do you think will happen if I spin up a new terminal session? And start running this code. I'm going to use the terminal commands in this lesson instead of the run button. So Java C thread priority dot Java, Java thread priority, just so that I can keep running this command over and over. And here we see that thread one finished running first, it finished counting to 99, and thread two and three were still going. So here we can see that thread one was indeed prioritized over threads two and three. But if we keep running this code, we're not always going to see this pattern. Well, here we see again, thread one finishing first. Let me scroll all the way up. Oh, it finished way before the other threads. All right. And here we see that actually thread one finished last. So keep in mind that the urgency component we're assigning to each thread is just one component of the priority equation. Setting this urgency component merely influences the priority of T1 against T2 and T3. It doesn't guarantee that T1 is always going to be the first to execute. There remains the unpredictable nature of the scheduler itself, but we can generally expect the priority to often shift in favor of thread 1. So here, once again, we see thread 1 clearly finishing first, threads 2 and 3 still going. So again, it's not a hard and fast rule that just because we give it max priority, it's going to finish first, but we can generally expect it to be prioritized over the other threads. Now, how can we further influence the priority of T1 so that it always, or not always, more often than not finishes before T2 and T3? What I'm gonna do is say, if the thread, if the current thread that's executing this count method, if it's not T1, so if the name does not equal thread one, so if threads two or three are the ones executing this function, 
And what I'm going to do is say thread dot yield. So here, uh, when a thread yields, what it's basically doing is it's surrendering its CPU time. So in this case, threads two and three are going to consistently surrender their CPU time in favor of thread one executing. So I'll go back, recompile my code using Java C. It's really important that you recompile the code before you rerun it, otherwise your changes will not reflect. Java thread priority. And now I'm gonna notice thread one finishing first far more consistently than before. It almost always finishes first now because as soon as threads two and three enter the first iteration of the loop, they automatically yield their CPU time and thread one is just free to do whatever it wants. Okay, so that's all we're gonna cover for this starter code. I hope the idea of priority is more clear to you now. Now let's go to thread sleep effect. This one is really cool because it contains a high priority thread, a thread that's been given max priority and a low priority thread. Okay. If I execute this code multiple times, so Java C thread sleep effect dot Java, Java thread sleep effect. If you execute this code multiple times, you can expect the higher priority thread to more often than not finish before the lower priority thread. All right. Now, how about we play around with this a little? So this isn't a very practical use case, but how can we ensure that the lower priority thread actually finishes before the higher priority thread? Again, you would seldom ever do that in real life, but let's just play around with this a little bit. Here, what we're going to do is implement some sleeping logic. So what I'm going to do is say thread dot sleep for some amount of sleep time. Now here's the thing, thread dot sleep throws an interrupted exception. So what we can do is try to run the code and then catch the interrupted exception in the event that it happens. Here we can just say print e dot get message. All right. And what I'm going to do is give the higher priority thread a sleep time of 10 milliseconds and low priority thread is not going to sleep at all. Okay. Now, if I consistently run this code, don't forget to compile your code first. The low priority thread is always going to finish first. And this is to be expected. After the first iteration, the high priority thread pauses for 10 milliseconds, which gives the lower priority thread plenty of time to swoop in and complete its task. The same results would be observed if each thread was executing on a different core. You can never truly predict how your threads will be scheduled, but we can generally expect that regardless of how they get processed, the active thread will always finish before the sleeping thread. All right, if I go back to my code and set this to a thousand milliseconds, recompile my code, I'm just going to let this run. Here we can see as soon as it counted zero, it went to sleep for one whole second. During that one second, the low priority thread was able to complete its task. And then after a whole second elapsed, high priority thread started counting again. And between each count, the thread kept sleeping for one whole second. All right, that's all we're going to cover for thread priority. Now, I know we didn't really cover any practical use cases, but consider these starter projects a threading playground that you can use to modify priorities, modify sleeping times, play around with it, get comfortable, and I will see you in the next lesson. And one last thing before I let you go, if you're the type of person that prefers to read, all of these lessons are available in article format on my website, Learn the Part. For this lesson in particular, I left you a link to the article inside the video description. And that's all. I will see you in the next lesson.